My name is Carrie. I'm the naturalist here at McLeod right now. I'll be done this month though because I'm graduating grad school and I'm doing part of this for grad school too, which was super exciting. I love being here at McLeod. If you haven't gotten a chance to walk the trails here, I suggest you go and check out the big walnut on the bridge. It's a really cool overlook of the bridge. Um, so it is in the direction that we're going. You'll see it as we pass. Um, and there's a ton of other trails and a bunch of programs as we have on the sleigh board and in the things we just gave to you. Um, two of them are for McLeod, one's for the playing field. Um, but today we're going to be talking about survival skills. Who knows what a survival skill is? What does it mean? Uh... Hmm. Max, I bet you might know. What's a survival skill? What's one survival skill you can think of? Um, well, a survival skill is pretty self-explanatory. But one of them is like making fire, yes. getting water, yep. mm -hmm. getting food. Yep. So we'll talk about a few survival skills Shelter. today. One of them is going to be building a shelter. And then we're going to talk about maybe some edibles that you could find in the wild around here. We're not going to eat any though, but we'll talk about some. We'll play a little game with it. And then the other thing we're going to do is start some fire in a few different ways today, okay? You might be able oh, to yeah, build your own fire if you'd like. Yeah, oh, real yeah. fire. Yep. And we'll talk about all the safety oh, stuff that has to do with that, all right? What's one thing you think you might want if you know you're going into the woods for a while? Climb a tree. You might climb a tree, but what's something you might bring with you? Water. Water. Water, yep. What else? Snacks. A snack. A you compass. definitely want to bring. A compass, yep. What else? Map. Map. Match. A match or something maybe to start some fire if you need to. How do you know where you're going besides the campus? What the compass? What else should you bring? Map. A map, right? What are we wearing? Coats. Coats. So you want to bring layers that you can take some off if you get too warm or put some on. And it's better if it's not cotton. If you feel something that's cotton, it's really soft, and if it gets wet, it holds water. It's better if you bring stuff that isn't cotton. It calls wicking. It keeps things off of your skin, right? It keeps water off of your skin, not on your skin. What about a flashlight? Oh, Who yeah. has a flashlight at home? Very Does anyone have a flashlight at home? Um, lost in the woods a whistle would help people find you so now that we're talking about if you get lost in the woods what's something you think you might Compass. need if you're lost in the woods and you, it's getting dark and you need to find a place to, to stay for the night what do you think you need shelter right so we're gonna go learn about some shelter so we'll take a little hike um, to a spot that we can build shelter here at McLeod okay and we'll talk about it as we go but start thinking what would I need to build some shelter? What would it look like? Six. Okay, so think about this as we walk. What would my shelter look like? And we'll, we'll learn about that in a little bit. Start about, thinking about that. About if you're gonna make a shelter, you have to make sure you're making it somewhere that's not already occupied by another animal, right? So there's shelters that are already built from another time that people were building shelters. We can break those down and use that stuff from those shelters. But when we go in there, we should check them first, right? We should peek in and be like, is there anything in there? Right? Is there anything that could indicate someone's living there? Right? And why Why does the naturalist always lead the hike? Because they know their way around. Yeah, or if there is something in there, I'm the first one to encounter it, right? So I'll lead us into that area. Right? Yeah, because you, you would know how to deal with it. With them. We would back away slowly and go somewhere else. <laughs> so yeah. what we do is okay. we throw you in. <laughs> and then we have the other Yes. Cold. What else do you think you have to keep in mind when you're searching for a spot? Oh, yeah. What's this? Poison ivy, right? So you don't want to be camping on a spot that has a bunch of poison ivy. Or grabbing poison ivy vines or the plants, right? For your bedding. You don't want to grab that. Something else to keep in mind. Do you see that tree that has no leaves on it? Yeah. Do you know what kind of tree that is? Who was here for dendrology? What kind of tree is this?
with some poison ivy, right? Or other plants that might harm you. What's another plant that people get hurt by? Uh, poison oak. Poison oak. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have poison oak. It's a stinging nettle, yeah. Uh, but yeah, poison oak would be a good one to keep in mind if you're by poison oak. Uh, What's that? What's stinging nettle? Sti yeah, stinging nettle. It's another plant that, uh, plant that when you go by, it feels like it's stinging you. Like, it's just prickly. Yeah. But there's other plants that you could take. Uh, milkweed. Um, but monarch. Monarchs, right? So you can take other plants, and there's different plants that have like a white substance that you can rub over it, and it makes you feel better, right? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of learned this plant last time I was here. Uh, Bless you. different vegetation if you don't want wind getting into those holes, right? So yeah. there's even more options and you're going to be able to look at all of these too when you're building your shelter for a reference if you'd like. Yeah. This is a leaf hut shelter. Yeah. Does it look like wind's going to get through that? No. No? Uh, maybe a little bit for the doorway. Maybe, right? Yeah. But you can always try to protect a doorway with something else. With some yeah, more... like 
maybe maybe you can have like some big sticks that you can point at like least make it slightly less windy yep a little less windy so how you do this one you prop it up in the fork of the tree do you see how it's in the tree yeah yeah and then you pretty much try to cover it with leaves cover it with leaves right but you're propping it up on a tree and you're piling a whole bunch of other sticks and such over that one and then you're piling it with mud and leaves can you see that oh yeah we do okay. have to pick up and there's descriptions more descriptions on the back here too so as you're making yours you and your family get to come over and like pick which one you want to make or you can share with another family and build the same one together so another one a lean-to shelter Ooh. Right? So this one, you're leaning a lot of the sticks up against one other stick or against a tree. Lean to. That one doesn't look like lean to though. But what's the problem with this lean to? What if the wind shifts in a different direction? That would be bad. And it would collapse. It could collapse. Or you could just have the wind on you all night long. Right? So it's like a house without a wall. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. It's like your house ha is missing a whole wall. So yeah. it's it's okay, but it doesn't hold up against the wind if it changes, or it doesn't keep you very warm because there's a whole side that's open, right? Yeah. Yes. Whenever, sometimes when we go, uh, we'll yes. build a fort in a specific area, and that's the time we build, but we put it on both sides make a small doorway. Yeah, there you go. So you've had experience court building before. Yeah. We, we just leave this tiny little area about this wide for a doorway. Yeah, yeah I've actually, actually so, lay, lay done that before using a blanket and my couch. So like this one <laughs> uses materials, right? Yeah. So an A-frame. So that one is kind of like the other one, but it's open on the bottom. So they're using the rope to go across and they're putting the tarp over it and staking down the corners, but it's open on the bottom still. But what about on the ground? Do you need to put something on the ground? Yeah, to keep animals out and such. Uh, not to keep animals out, but what about to keep you comfortable or warm from the cold ground? Yeah. Um, yes, you need to put leaves and such. Yeah, so you can I'll also make six. a rough bed. It's called a rough bed. Does that sound comfortable? <laughs> no. Not really, right? It's rough. But it'll be more comfortable than just this ground, right? Yeah. So you're gonna pile up leaves and grass and evergreen, uh, pieces like underneath all these you don't want to be poked by any of the pines but you're gonna try to create some cushion and some dryness right find stuff that's dry so you're not cold so you can create a nice bedding underneath your shelter as well but before we go and build shelters what are some safety things we have to think about lightning lightning yeah so you have to watch out for lightning not right now right but if you're building your shelter, maybe build a place that's not right next to a very tall tree, right? That's going to be the one that's hit by the lightning and go down into the ground and get you. Yeah, that's right. But what about these? We're going to be able to tear these down, some of them, to use some of the pieces for your own shelter. How are you supposed to be careful doing that? Let's think together and brainstorm. The tree. What about the tree? It can fall on you. Yeah, watch out. If you're going to grab something, make sure it's not going to make something else fall on you or someone around you. So work as a team. Make sure. Are we all clear? Is anyone standing in the way? Like, look around, yeah. ask questions, Callie. right? Callie. What about the plants? Should we watch out for certain kinds of plants? Yes. Poison ivy. Poison, Poison ivy. Oak. So if you see a vine wrapping around a tree or a piece that you're don't, about to grab, don't touch it. Just leave it. Because that could be poison vine. ivy. Yeah. And it's hard to tell when there's no leaves, right? Yeah. But so what just about, don't touch any vines. Just don't touch any vines. Yeah. I'll go with that. So you can build anywhere in this area. You can use any of the stuff and make sure you watch when you pick things up. Look for animals that might be underneath things just to be safe, right? I think we're going to be okay. Um, yes? Woodpecker. Yeah, woodpeckers have left some holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that right. you could use for to find nesting. Yeah. So I want adults to be really hands-on with this one. So build it with your kids. Um, and I'm going to be around going through the groups. You can use these. Read the descriptions if you want to come up with which one you want to build. Um, and we'll see what everyone comes up with. There's a hole you can lay in. I'd be afraid all that wood would fall on me, though. If you guys want to add to one, Nora, you can, or you can build a whole new one. Which one do you guys think you want to do? A whole new one or add to one? Uh, 
Yeah, we're yeah. working with this right here, this group. I'm going to help you get started. Where do you think we want to start though, girls, huh? Um, hmm. Cool. There's a cool tree right there that we can build again. Well, some of those look like they might be dead branches, so maybe not that one, right? How about that one right there? You see that tree, that big, tall, healthy one? Let's go over there and see what we can find. You got your first stick. Good. Okay. Let's go on this one. Whoa. <laughs> you already got two trees right here that'll help support whatever you need. You're pretty supportive. Whoa. Does that look nice? Kind of twigs and branches. Let's see. You want to try and build this one? Where you lean them up. Like, just like that, you're starting it. See that lean? See if we can create a lean like that. Girls, can you go find some sticks? This is a good fork that we got. See that? Look for big ones. That one would work. Yeah, can you find any sticks? There you go. Like Rebecca, sticks. get some sticks. Some big ones. Stop. Let's use these two trees. And it doesn't have to fit everyone. It could fit just one person inside. Edward, that would fit if I can take There's more sticks, so keep piling them up against it and see if you can create some kind of shelter. Just be really careful with the sticks. You don't want to whack anybody. So when you see, like, trees, I think one of these, like the white, mm -hmm. or maybe that's just. Like, is that fungus? Um, that? It might be lichen. So oh, it's like a combination okay. of that, um, a fungus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bunch. Yeah, it's probably lichen. Okay, so we're starting to create a little gap for one person to live inside. You see that? So keep going. You guys got something going. Rachel, Look find some sticks. Go that way. There's a bunch of them that way. A little bit bigger. bigger sticks? I'm going to give you this piece of paper. So you can keep looking at it. Let's see what other sticks we can find. Yeah. I think I think somebody should stay here and build the fort and make a fort. Two of us should stay here to make the fort. Oh, it's stuck on your Sticks. Can we gather sticks up there? I want to support this side. You see how it's not touching this branch, but if it were to break, I want to see if we can support it. What can we support it with? Some more branches to support that big one. Maybe something that can lean this way. Big one. Walk around it and see if you can see a door place. There you go. So what do we need to keep doing? Where do we need more walls? Tell us. Or where do you think you need more walls at? If this is going to be your entrance, where do you think you need more of a, more walls? I think it's a one-person 
and shelter. Yeah, Nora, why don't you get out? <laughs> you can take I, turns. What do you think? See these littler like sticks? This one? No, this stick. You put it right this in stick. here. Wow. See if we can. Look oh. at you! This one's so hot to me. There you go. You put that in. If you guys want to gather the leaves and make the bed in there, the rough bed, you want to put a bunch of leaves on the bottom? Can you do that? Gather a whole bunch up and you can put it on the bottom. Make sure you don't see any ground. Ooh, I a little, little right Is anybody ready to take a nap? No. <laughs> I just to take a nap. Now everyone got to build a shelter. We had a couple of families work together and it turned out to be really fun. We have, does anyone want to show their shelter? Do you want to show you? Okay, let's start over here. We can go around. So tell us a little bit about your shelter and then we'll move on. We'll talk about the fire in a little bit. Stuff all attached to a tree already, and you do that and put the stuff on It's okay. <laughs> so I see your door. The stump? Oh, yes. Look, we have our own little built-in table. Ah. <laughs> like, you could put something on it to make the table top. Yeah, we could. And we were saying we maybe a little candle. Yeah. We need to find a wood cookie. Yeah. We Perfect. put a candle there. Have some light. We need a wood cookie. Lantern! Yeah. Oh, we have okay, we'll put a good there. shelter for awesome. right. Well, who are your neighbors? Where are your neighbors? Yeah. Yeah. The leaves have yeah. shelter. Yeah. We didn't get the leaves. I think it looks a lot like it though. It does. If you had more time. <laughs> yeah. You got that. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, it's such a little bed. Rachel. Tell them it's a lean to. It's like a little bed. Do you hear me? A lean to shelter?
little tree growing off the ground right here, and then they just propped it all up on that. Did you want to tell them? What did we lean it against? They saw you looking up. The tree? Yep, this little tree. Good job. It has a fork in it, right? All right. So you guys, we all made a shelter. So good job. Give yourselves a clap. Good job. So now you know how to build at least some kind of shelter if you were to find yourself in the woods. Now we need to fill our tummies, right? Like edible plants. Yeah. So on our hike back, we're going to play an edible um, wild edibles game. I'm going to show you a piece of paper at some point on our walk back, and I'm going to read a little bit of the description, but not tell you what plant it is. You have to say, yes, I would eat it, or no, I would not. If you say, yes, I will eat it, I'll give you a popsicle stick. You should get at least maybe three popsicle sticks by the time we get back to the shelter, okay, or by the nature center, because yeah. that means that you had enough food for the day. If you say, yes, I'll eat it, and it turns out to be a bad plant, I'm going to give you either a red skull or a yellow skull, and one of them means it makes you sick, and one of them means that it's really bad that it kills people for eating it, or animals, some animals for Don't eating it. Don't actually eat so these things. You're not actually eating these things, right? We're not going to eat it here because people that eat edibles know 100% what it is, and 100% that they could eat it, okay? Like if I were to go and eat edible plants in the wild, which I wouldn't unless I knew 100% what it was, or I was with a professional that knew, okay? All right, so keep in mind, I'm going to show you the, the pictures, tell you description, and you have to decide, raise your hand, yes, I would eat it, or keep your hand down, no, I won't eat it. This plant is either a small tree or a tall shrub. It's taller than you at any rate. It has little green berries, red branches. Yeah, that sounds bad. I think I've seen those before. That's going to be a hard pass for me. Who raises their hand that yes, they would eat it? I'll eat it. You'll eat it? Anyone else? One that will eat it, I'm inclined to eat it. That's a hard pass for me. Okay. The, you are possessed by the urge to snuggle with this plant. You cuddle in its bows with leaves brushing against your bare skin, a terrible itch rises up it wherever it touches you. You decide to never touch poison sumac again, ever. Oh so I just wanted to hear, hear Yeah, it. so it didn't kill at all. It just made you very itchy and with a rash. So, so like you have one of these. It's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah or like That's a green itch. I got it this summer. Yeah, it was pretty bad. All right, so we'll do another one in a little bit. You guys get the game now? Okay, let's keep hiking. Ooh. This plant is about as tall as you are. Last rose plant? Eat it. Mm. Wild rosemary? Is anyone going to raise their hand? This so plant who would is eat about this? as tall as you are. Eric says he'll eat it. Yes, you can. I can get a pack. Will you eat this? Oh, my okay. God. This bristly shrub leaves a few scratches on your fingers, but you don't let that stop you. You pluck and eat the delicious berries. You make dried leaves into tea. You eat the tender shoots like a salad. You realize that blackberries are truly wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah! Yes. So you all... Everyone... Get a this this vine like grows red. up the side I of a tree. Which one? This vine grows up the side of a tree. Oh, I know what that is. Bad idea. Do you want to eat it? Who wants to eat that? It looks like blueberry, but... Amber, do you want to eat it? You want to eat it? I'm pretty sure blueberries are their own plants. They don't have a lie on it. Amber wants to eat it. I'm not going to die. Okay. I'm not going to die. Virginia creeper. Hungry as you are, you stuff great big handfuls of Virginia creeper berries into your mouth. Then you keel over and die. <gasps> this plant brushes against your knees. Do you, what part do you eat? I don't know. I don't you just came across it. You don't know yet. That's, I don't think you should eat that. Eat it? No. Yeah. Let's not eat it. You chomp, no, one of us is a ghost. You chomp up the crisp white rootstocks for a peppery tooth wart salad. It's eye-watering, but satisfying. Yay! So it's edible. No! How many oh, more are there? Tooth wart. This 
small plant reaches toward your knees, there is a sharp, sweet smell in the air. The smell of onion. You dig up the bulbs and take the tender leaves. You eat some as a salad and cook the rest. You acquired some sustenance. So yeah, this is your wild onion. You almost step in this low-growing plant. I know what it is. Yes or no? Right I hear here. someone go around the corner. Okay, I was like, this is good. So forget. One more, we survive. You dine on strawberries and boil the dried leaves. This small tree grows in the shadows of much bigger trees. I dropped my help you bring it up. Your fellow people. You want to eat that? Who wants to eat this? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, I'll six, give you a seven. Food. You pluck a few of the flowers for a de delightful salad. You wish you had some butter or oil so you could saute the buds and tender young seed pods. Alas, the red foot flower salad will have to do. So you can eat the the, the, or the flowers. Cool. This vine climbs up a tall tree. The vine climbs so high that you can't see the top of it. Yes or no? Would you eat this one or not? This plant beckons you to come near. You obligingly snuggle with the leaf. After a few moments, you, your skin starts to feel a little tingly, then a little itchy, then a lot itchy. Uh-oh, They, you, why did you snuggle with poison ivy? I knew it. This is poison ivy. I yeah. knew poison ivy. All right, good job. You Where is it coming from? That way. 
that way, right? So if my shelter is right here, do I want my fire blowing into my shelter? No. No. Do I want it blowing into my other wood that I need to use later? No. No, right? So I want my shelter to be on this side where the wind is going to hit my shelter and then hit my fire. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, what about when we're working with the tools of the fire? Let me show you. Let's get out gloves because... So, we have a few different ways of starting a fire. Everyone knows what this is? Hand a fire! Right. It's a lighter. Right. So, I have matches that are waterproof. Uh -huh. What about that? Okay. Waterproof. You can buy some waterproof matches to take with you when you go out into the woods if you need them. I also have some wool steel and I feel like everything moves around in this box all the time. And batteries. You never, ever, ever want to store these together though. Okay, because what happens, I'm going to show you, in a small portion. You want it separated, like it's in this box. This is another activity, adults. You're going to be right in there with them, making sure all those, I'll be around with everyone. Just in case. So, this battery, you guys, what, what are batteries, what are they used for? Electricity, right? Yeah. So they're, fires. Yeah, so these are going to be your pans that you get to start a fire in. And we're going to keep it on the cement when we do it, okay? So I'm going to do it right over it right now. But these are the two ends that when you connect them, it completes the circuit. The electricity, the energy starts. So when I touch it with the steel wool, fire. it starts, okay? So you want to make sure you're down here doing it and you put it down when you're done. And it's kind of windy, so make sure your back is to the wind so it doesn't blow out, okay? But if you go like this and you touch it, you have a little... here like this but faster and harder okay and it should spark if you put Vaseline on a cotton ball it actually creates um, you don't have to cover the whole thing just a little bit of it and it will help 
it fuel it longer and keep it burning longer. So I'm going to demonstrate for you. Okay, so I'm going to put that in another bin. And the other thing I have here, you guys, is water. You need water nearby to put out your fire. You should never leave a fire without someone watching it, okay? Never, ever. Because what can happen is the flame will jump into another area or there will be sparks that go off into the grass or near other plants and start the forest on fire. Start forest on fire. And then you'll have to have the nice warm top of smoking the bear. Yep. Almost! You're creating sparks, just not enough. Yeah, this one takes a little bit of practice, too. So it's okay if you don't get it. Away. There you go. Nice one! Lay. There it is. I'm going to throw a leaf in. Just throw the leaf okay. at it. So just leave it for now, though. Okay. Well, it's your turn. You can Leaves add some stuff to it. It. Yeah, the leaves sometimes aren't the best because yeah, they can start floating up into the air and go into the woods. So maybe we won't do. I know as a kid we sometimes threw leaves in, but it wasn't always the safest. And when it's burning, do we put our hands in there? No. No, right? Just let it burn. Except for maybe if it's like about that size, you kind of go like this. You can hold like outside the ring. Yeah. Yeah. yeah outside outside the ring. of the flames. So right now, you guys, if the Vaseline wasn't on it, the cotton ball would burn up pretty quick. It wouldn't keep going like that. That's the Vaseline burning right now. Not the cotton ball. The cotton ball is just for the gasoline. So this sword, the Vaseline keeps it burning longer so you can catch the wood on fire. When I did some more campfires, I collected my dryer lint all the time and kept a stash of dryer lint. So this is going for a long time. Um, so we have the batteries and the steel steel wool. We have flint and steel with the con ball and our Vaseline. We also have, you can always use a candle. You can just light a candle, one of those tea candles, and place it in your fire, and that's fine. And this is an old fashioned, we're not going to work with this today, but this is old fashioned like flint and steel. real real sharp so if you miss it and hit your finger it can cut your finger open so we're not going to do this one today um, but I just wanted you to see what it looked like um, you can also use magnifying glasses with the sun it won't work today kids yeah it won't work today <laughs> but yeah you can use magnifying glasses if you get it just right with the sun it could uh, magnify and it'll burn it'll burn something for you um, you can create, this is a combination of wax and then just like a, a cotton material so the wax will keep it burning but you start this part on fire. You just put it in your fire and then add all your wood to it, your fuel. So add all you. the rest of your fuel in. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to let you guys take a shot at it. Um, it will be uh, there should be 10 fire rings, so one per family, let's do. Okay, so we know there's adults at every one. Okay? I don't right. know what type of fire is. So remember, we're not stepping over it, we're not reaching into it with our hair or anything. We stay outside the ring. We don't jump over it. We, we don't run next to it. We have water, you guys, to put out your fire. If it seems that you're worried it's getting too big or it's about to blow away, get the water and pour some water on it. Okay? But only a little bit. Only a little bit. The other thing I want to show you. Was a type of fires, okay? So you have lean-to, just like you create the lean-to shelter. You lean it up against another log. So your smaller pieces go underneath and your larger pieces go above. Your log cabin, kind of like when you think of a log cabin house, right? The wood gets stacked like a square, every other on each side. So this one also shows a TP inside. That's another form. So some, I created teepees and then put log cabins around it. It just makes it more stable. 
Um, this is longer burning type fire. If you want a long burning fire, this is the type you should make, okay? But um, it's not always very stable because a lot of logs can be rounded on certain sides and they'll start rolling around as it burns. Uh, the lean-to, it's good for rain. So it's a good one to do if it's windy or rainy. And it's a pretty stable fire. But um, it doesn't burn very intensely, so it's not gonna keep you really warm, that type of fire. It can take a while to get started too. The TP, you guys all know what TP looks like? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a good, there's a good chance of getting a fire going in the wind or rain again. Um, pretty stable structure. Um, I'm sorry, so this one, the TP, so the problem with this one is that it's not always very stable. Because it's in a TP, it could get blown over pretty easily. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. But it also provides a good deal of light. So if you need light when you're out in the woods, you can use this one, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and try and start some fires. So you can think about all these ones and see which ones you would make if you, have, if you were gonna make a big fire. This one is called a star campfire. So you put logs around in a circle pointing outward and you start the fire inside with the kindling and tin, uh, tin, tin, uh, tinder. Tin, tinder. Sorry, sorry, tinder, sorry. And then as that burns, you push the logs in around. You keep pushing them in, okay? So this one is very minimalist type fire, um, but it requires a lot of maintenance because you have to keep watching it, okay? All right, so let's have you guys practice yeah. So let's have each family grab a tin and then see which one you want to try. Yeah, you can. You have a good part. If you want to do this, take some sticks and you can build like, one of those fire buildings. So try and build that while we're finishing up, okay? This is the like if this is wood. give her high five. She started your campfire. Thank you. Over here, both one. Nice and toasty. Wow. Pull it back. Pull it back. Is it going? Yeah. Good job. Good job, Rebecca. You want to put this stick on it? So you guys have another important part of that building. I have water here, you guys. Another important part is if it's even